Good morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Lord, bless this word. Lord, speak through these lips. Lord, wash our hearts and our minds and guide us and teach us in your name. Amen. This message is going to be called Blamed for Everything. Blamed for Everything. Christians are blamed for everything. Man, we see this in the Old Testament or New Testament with the Apostle Paul that the Emperor Nero, which was like the president or king at the time over Rome, uh, did some heinous stuff, long story short, and blamed Christians for it. I think he set a bunch of fires in Rome. And then he blamed the Christians. And then he had the Christians burned on the stake alive in the city. You can imagine walking down, you know, L.A. somewhere or New York and seeing people hanging on a cross or a post being burning alive. That's that literally happened. Right, man. When I look at Christians and the Apostle Paul talks about this, he says, man, those people are teaching Christ terribly. But. I glorify God because they're pointing them to Christ, whether they realize this or not. Even if they're teaching Christ heretically, he's saying they're still talking about him because people are now thinking about Jesus, right? So there's that, and that's a whole other message. <laughs> but man, we've seen so many bad teachings of Jesus, and there's a lot of things that we're like, we just don't know. Right? There's so many bad teachings about Jesus, about God, about the Spirit of God. There's just so many bad teachers. We don't have enough time to get into all that. We don't, we're not going to ever, <laughs> unless the Lord puts it on my heart to, but I have never sensed that, to be honest. With that being said, man, I'm like, dude, there are certain Christians that I know. I being one, I'm sure to somebody, somebody else's book or life. Uh, you are an enemy in somebody's life one way or another, by the way. <laughs> Christianity is the most persecuted religion all, ever, right? Alongside the Jews. But actually, I would say to some degree, I don't know, maybe the Holy Spirit will tell me, right? Maybe they're one and the same. Obviously, they are technically, but the Jews were the most persecuted people, right? because they represent God, but Christi Christianity kind of joined their ranks in that and became the most bloodied religion ever. Well, because the cross and because of the altar of sacrifice and uh, the sacrifices of animals and so forth, it is literally the most bloody religion ever because of sin, right? In order for you and I to be forgiven of sin, somebody had to shed their blood or something had to shed their blood. Again, this message is called the blamed for everything. The entire, our entire faith is built off of uh, who's going to take the blame. Back in the Old Testament, it was the animals, right? Or the prophets or the apostles. Who's going to take the blame? S society, or may I say our sinful nature in humanity is always looking to blame someone or something but particularly someone. We're always looking for someone to blame. Welcome to humanity. You people are always looking for someone to blame. God's like, I'll give you one more sacrifice. His name will be Jesus. He was gonna take all your blame and all your guilt and all your shame. When we are in guilt and we're in shame, we look to blame. When we are in guilt and we are in shame, we look to blame. We look to blame, we look to accuse, in other words. But the only person who can wash us of that is Jesus. His blood washes us and cleanses us from the guilt that, of the sin we've committed or the sin that people have committed against us and the shame that we've committed or that people have committed against us. His blood is the only thing that washes us and heals us from all the guilt and all the blame and all the shame. Amen? There is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood, and that blood is Jesus. Amen? That's another message we're, we're going to cover next. With that being said, 
Everyone's looking to blame something. And if you never notice anything, we're always looking to blame someone particularly that's innocent or something that's innocent, particularly someone. We're always looking to blame someone that's innocent. That's our nature. We're guilty. We're looking for something or someone that didn't do anything wrong. That's what guilty people do. They look for someone innocent to blame. When I do something wrong, I look to my kids and go, you did this because they're innocent. That happened to me when I was growing up too, because I was innocent. My parents blamed me. If you are a Christian, you are, you have chosen to be a scapegoat. You are a scapegoat. Look at it. Look at the cross. They handed, all the disciples fled from Jesus. Like, who's at fault here? And Jesus was like, I am. And look at everybody else. Oh, we're out of here. That's sinful nature. That's our sin nature. You find out a lot as a pastor. You get blamed for everything. <laughs> right? And look at how we blame the leaders. Look at how society looks to people. They're people like you and me. These leaders, these politicians, they the blame. The reason our country's falling apart is because it's your fault. <laughs> Trump, Biden, Kamal Harris, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. I'm not at fault for anything. That's usually the first suspect. The person who's blaming someone else is usually the one who's suspect, right? You sus. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, I, all this new Gen Z stuff is starting to take over slowly. You sus, bro. <laughs> brother. It's brother, not bro. <laughs> Watch out for people who are always blaming people. That's guilt. That's shame. That's why we do it. Right? There needs to be a sacrifice. We are called to help Jesus reconcile the world. And he did it by example, by taking the blame. And so we're called to take the blame of society. So when people say anything bad about, for example, Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses who claim to be Christians, guess who's gonna take the fault and blame for that? You claim to be a Christian, you have now been put into that category. When one Christian does something wrong or bad or stupid or sinful or, or ignorant or arrogant, whatever, or heretical if you're a christian the world people see you did that when a catholic does something stupid heretical dumb pedophilia whatever if you're a christian you get blamed for it i'm a pastor i have tried not to live in my life in sin i struggle with porn i struggle with anger i will admit to those things and i'll admit to pretty much those other things too that i've repented of right but with that being said, when one pastor falls, now everybody's looking at all the pastors. You're going to fall too. You do the same thing. It's like, really? When one Christian screws up, they look at us. They look at every Christian. You're a Christian? Oh, those Christians, they do this and they do that. You, whether you like it or not, you have signed up for, for the blame. <laughs> the reason this world is so horrible is because of Christians. It's because the pastors, particular, we're all Christians, right? So when it, it happens, it's like people, like there's this guy, for example, some of you guys know who he is. <laughs> he probably knows who he is. Comes to our church, acts like a fool, acts like an idiot, long story short, and is trying to witness. We've had many of these kinds of people trying to represent Jesus. They represent Jesus terribly. And guess what? They say they go to I am love church. Guess what? People think that I act like them. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, these people don't like me. They think you're stupid and do 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 and a dodo head. And I'm like, it's because you represent us terribly. Like, <laughs> I'm not you, <laughs> right? They're, they're, we've been we've been called many things, cult. I was like, wow, okay, because because Christians represent Christ terribly. I represent Christ terribly, right? Other Christians, to other Christians, they're like, you're representing Christ terribly. You're a terrible Christian. You're like, I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm not, even when I'm not trying to be, even when I'm really trying hard, clenching my butt cheeks and really trying hard not to be a terrible Christian, people still look at me like, you're a terrible Christian. Why? Because that guy, because that guy screwed up. It's your fault. Because the Christians, they murdered a bunch of people. They did all these crusades and they killed the Indians and all that stuff. It's your fault. 
And I'm just like, I wasn't even alive. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, we are literally taking the blame for everything. Jesus said, that's why Jesus said, if they hate you, right? They hate me. You know why? Because he's saying, you are a Christian because you repent and you take responsibility for your actions, your sins. And I've washed you and made you guiltless. They have not taken responsibility for their sin, have not repented, and I have not washed them and have not cleansed them in my blood. Therefore, they look for someone innocent like you who've been washed in my blood to blame. I've noticed that. Guilty people are always looking for someone to blame. Guilty people are always looking for someone to blame. Guilty people are always looking for someone to blame. Guilty people are always looking for someone to blame. I've learned that very quickly as a pastor. I am always being blamed for stuff. I'm blamed, being blamed for stuff that I didn't even sign up for, that I don't even know about. I'm like, what? What? Who's saying what about me? Who are they? <laughs> I don't even know them. I've never saw their face in my life. Their name does not come up in my filing cabinets. <laughs> And I look at it and I'm like, what is this going on? And then I, God shows me a grander picture. He's like, look at Christianity. We've all done a terrible job representing Jesus. We can agree to that. Amen. Some of us have it. But even then, we still get, we can still get thrown in the bunch, in the mold with everybody else's sin. Like, even though we can genuinely say, I've, I have not done that. That I'm susceptible to that. I have that nature in me but I've given that to the Lord, so I have not committed that. I have not done that. Therefore, why am I being blamed for what everybody else does? Why am I being blamed for what they did in the Crusades? Why am I being blamed for what they did back to Jesus? Or this, that, I'm being blamed for all this stuff I don't even know. But I love the cross because the cross is like, I'll take the blame. His arms are open, his nails, his, his feet are, um, pierced with nails his arms are pierced with nails and his arms are open we crucified we murdered that guy and he's like his head's down which still represents humility and he's like i forgive you what and that's how the church should represent i forgive you i forgive you i forgive you for stabbing me murdering me nailing me into a tree i forgive you for blaming me for everything and burning me on a stake emperor nero i forgive you that's the cross is god's open arms to us even though we did that to him that's what the church should represent right as jesus says much has been forgiven love much jesus loved completely he forgave us all we should do the same when we repent i can't hold anything against my enemies he said again when i repent i can't hold anything against my enemies because i'm guilty of that too and i've been forgiven when you've been forgiven of something you can't hold anything against anyone, right? But when you've been not forgiven, you hold everything against everyone and you're blaming and you're looking for a sacrifice. And since Jesus isn't walking here on the flesh anymore, we're looking for the next best thing, the church. <laughs> you ever notice the secular people, the secular entertainment, the secular talk show hosts and all that stuff, late night TV shows, you know, they always blame the church. They do it at night. Of course they do. The devil and his people love coming out at night. I've noticed that. God's people love waking up early in the morning and watching the sun and the brisk weather and the cool breeze and then nice, the niceness. There's that that nice brisk, right? It's cold, but the sun's coming out, but it's like warm too. Woo, love that. But at night, I don't like the night. I used to love the night. I don't like the night anymore, right? It's, it, it's got this dark aura moving. It's like nothing certain, you know, when you're walking in dark, you're like darkness, dark, darkness, darkness. And it's like, you can't really track anything. <laughs> your scepters your perceptors of your eyes you're like what's what is what's what what is what is anything you know <laughs> but when you're in the daytime it's like this is this and that's that that's this right <laughs> you hear what i'm saying 
But look around. My kids love Daniel Tiger. Look around, look around, find something to do, right? That's the saying. But look around, look at how the blame, that everyone's blaming someone. Guilty people are always blaming people. Guilty people are always blaming people. Guilty people, guilty people are always blaming people. I know, I found this in my own nature. I'm like, why am I always blaming people? Why am I so focused on what everybody else is doing? Why am I so focused on everybody else's sin? <laughs> and when you get been forgiven of something, or when you struggled with something, which means used to, with the D, struggled with something that you no longer struggle with, or now you're aware about, you see it in other people. You know, I used to do that, I used to blame everybody, yep, did that, did that, did that. Look at them, blaming everybody. Why? Because guilty people always blame people. They feel guilt. So they're always looking at, at others, look at them, and they're trying to throw their guilt, they're trying to throw their sin at somebody else. It's your fault, 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 right? Jesus says those people are not going to enter the kingdom of God, but they're always blaming. Those who enter the kingdom of God are repenting. Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned. Those are the people that enter God's kingdom. He says they'll enter the kingdom before everybody else who doesn't repent. Hear me out? So here's your, it's your repentance message. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. It's here. It's now. But you won't see it unless you repent. Unless you genuinely, because there's a lot of fake repentance out there. But unless you genuinely look at yourself and go, Lord, I've done that. Lord, forgive me. Don't be like Esau who'd be like, man, if it wasn't for this person, I wouldn't have done that. Lord, I'm sorry, but it's, I'm sorry, but I'm not really sorry. It's their fault. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be in the situation. That's not repentance. That's pride, <laughs> right? So be like, re repent. I wouldn't say Jacob because he's, <laughs> repent. Look at yourself. Repentance is your cleansing. Repentance is your eye opener. Repentance is your revelation. When the blood of Jesus washes you, your eyes are open. Let me say that again. When the blood of Jesus cleanses us, our eyes are open. I get accused of a lot of things. Things that obviously I know of, things that I'm suspicious of. I'm sus of myself, suspicious of myself. For you people who know how to speak proper English, let me break down sus for you. Sus is short for suspect. <laughs> Gen Z, suspect is where you're getting sus from. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure they're just like, yeah, sus, 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 you know. But they're like, what does it actually mean? Suspect. <laughs> Suspicious behavior, right? Warning signs. With that being said, now I forgot my message. <laughs> Guilty people are always blaming people. Guilty people are always blaming people. Guilty people are always looking at the sins of others. Guilty people are always looking at the sins of others. Guilty people are always looking at everyone else's sins but their own. People who don't believe in Jesus are always looking at the sins of others. Look at their sin, look at their sin, look at their sin, look at their sin. Meanwhile, they're not looking at their own sin. They've got logs of sins, piles of sins in their own life. And they don't recognize it because they're so focused on everybody else's sin. Right? Oh, look at that little sin right there. That, 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 that we got right there. <laughs> well, they got mountains of that and more in their own life. That's human nature. Right? That's human nature. But when you start to humble yourself and you repent and you let the blood wash you and cleanse you, 
you get healed. First off, your mind, your sanity comes back. Your peace comes back, right? Your joy comes back. Your, your happiness and your love for people come back. Amen? And there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> but an unrepented person loses their joy, loses their peace, loses their sanity. Jesus is the blood of Christ. He has no sin. He sees the world very clearly. When you're in sin, you have a distorted view of the world. And the only thing that can wash that away is to be washed in the blood of Christ. That means God must genuinely see that you are have a heart of repentance. He's in heaven. He says, okay, that's actually repentance. Send my son's blood. Jesus pours his blood on you and cleanses you. And you can feel that cleansing blood. Let's do it right now. You have anything to, to apologize for? I do. Gossip. Let's do it. I'm going to get washed in gossip. Lord, forgive me for gossiping about such and such person. You know who they are. I don't need to say that publicly. Father, would you forgive me and wash me from head to toe in your blood? And my friends and my family and my spouse, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sometimes it takes a bit, but I can already feel God's, Jesus' blood cleansing me. Forgiven, forgiven. He never runs out of blood so long as we don't run out of repentance, right? <laughs> you hear me out? People, the difference between people who are in hell and heaven, people who are in heaven have said, I'm sorry, a thousand million times. People who are in hell and the darkest of hell have never said they're sorry. And people who are as bad in darkness, I don't know, any sin can get you into hell and into the darkest places. But if I, the way I look at it, right? At least on this side of life. I want to go closer to the light. So I need to repent my way there, right? Say, I'm sorry, get washed again and again and again. We got to get washed every day. But the people who are in the darkest as hell never say they're sorry. Right? I don't know about you, but if it was between like complete pitch black and complete light, and there's the in-betweens, I don't want to be in between and say sorry sometimes. I want to be in the light. I'm going to say a sorry a lot. I don't want to be like not saying I'm sorry and then moving darker and darker. Did you notice people who never say they're sorry? Their conscience is getting darker and darker and darker and darker. Like they're becoming more wicked and more wicked and more demonic and more endless reasoning, right? But you ever notice people that say they're sorry the most? They're getting lighter and lighter and lighter and they're getting joyful and joyful and heavier and heavier and heavier. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Which one are you? Amen? There's so much to cover. Again, and so what we're seeing here is we're seeing society. We're seeing, let's just say there's three, but there's really only two, but there's three. There's three kinds of people. There are people who are getting saved, who are repenting and growing in repentance and getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, and lighter right? And then there are people who are not repenting Right? And sometimes they're like, I repent, I'm getting repent, or being repent, you know, I'm getting lighter and angrier and lighter and angrier. <laughs> and they're just on this wibbly wobbly fest. Eventually they'll give in to one. They'll get even to the I'll get it lighter and happier and joyful, or they'll get darker and angrier and run, 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 and disgruntled and demonic and evil. I literally think some people are fully possessed. Like they're no longer human anymore. They're just like, they're just God letting them live because he, he says it. There are vessels of wrath and there are vessels of gold, right? And purity. And so some people, I look in their eyes and I go, you're a demon. You're complete. Your conscience is seared. Jesus said, what happens if salt loses its flavor? Where can it be salted again? What happens if a person's conscience is completely darkened and they can find nothing in themselves to repent? And it's just dark right? There's death. There's nothing in them anymore that has a chance to repent. They're just 
I don't know. Like, I, I think so, right? I, I used to say, or I, I would say, hey, some people, as long as they got breath in their lungs, there's a chance. I don't know if that's true anymore because I'm seeing some people, they got just nothing but darkness in their eyes. It's insane, right? So then you have the people, obviously, who are just, like I said, they're, they're, their conscience is so seared. And they're, never, they're, they're, they're just like, all that comes out of their mouth is somebody else's fault. Like they can literally murder someone cold-blooded, recorded, and everything. We saw you, you have thousand witnesses, we caught you, there's there's no way around this. You, you said, I'm gonna murder you, I'm Satan or whatever. You said some horrible things, you meant it, and then you look at them in their eyes, like some serial killers, and they look at you dead in the face, whether they're smiling or not, and they're like, I didn't do that. You're like, what? We caught you, recorded you, got you red-headed, your hands red caught your hands in the paint jar you put your fingerprints all over that thing we got videotape we've got thousands of people watched you in the stadium like we caught you i, I don't know what you're talking about i didn't do that i'm innocent like what i mean if you've ever done any research in in some of these uh psychopathic murderers or killers they look at you blank face and they go yeah i'm innocent I've had certain people look at me dead in the face and be like, I believe in Jesus and slice someone's throat in front of my face. Not literally, but like they do something. I'm like, how did you not see what you did was wrong? Like, right? They have found no heart of repentance. And they're the ones that the Bible is talking about that are fueling the fire of this world. And it's not a good fire, right? There are many got to look in the context because there are, there are fires that represent good and there are fires that represent bad. There are uh, obviously good angels, bad angels, right? Fallen angels. There are, so you got to look at the context. There, there's, there's good oil and there's bad oil, right? And so you can't take everything at face value. You got to look at what the context is talking about. But they're fueling the fire, the negativity of this world right you got to look look out watch out look out right there's a lot of deceptive teachers and a lot of deception going on around us non-stop so going back so our message is called they blame us for everything right any good christian is going to be blamed jesus says or paul writes he says anyone who desires to live a righteous uh life in christ will will be persecuted it's a matter of time will be persecuted why because you're washed in the blood you are cleansed from all unrighteousness you have been healed you've been forgiven you have the indwelling of the holy spirit amen and so they don't want to be forgiven those unbelieving people without the holy spirit right and there are people with the holy spirit who've been darkened because they don't want to repent See what I'm saying? And so with that being said, be careful. There's lots of personalities and spirits and motivations and intentions, right? That we just can't see, but the spirit can see. And Jesus says by their fruits, by their behavior, you, you'll recognize them. Amen? Uh, maybe they can still find a heart of repentance and turn to Christ. I don't know. But Jesus does. Ooh. So with that being said, we have to be cautious and aware. We're being blamed for everything. When one sinful Christian does something, or one Christian does something, we're all sinful. But when one Christian does something, everyone's going to look at you. To some point or another, someone's going to look at you and be like, hey, this Christian just did this. What do you think about that? Basically saying, hey, this Christian just did this. How is this your fault? You're like, I don't even know them. This is your fault because you're a Christian. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> right? And so even when, whether evangelical, Protestant, Presbyterian, Baptist, or whatever, Catholic, even, sad to say, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, even though they're not, you know, even them, when they do something wrong, someone's going to look at you and be like, how is this your fault? You did something here. You don't, you don't even know these people. You never met these people, right? You're not even part of the same organization. You're going to be blamed for it. Why? Because you carry the name of Christ on you. 
even if these people aren't Christian and they walk around acting like they are, calling themselves Christians, they're going to somehow look at you and be like, how was this your fault? So when you listen to all that negativity about Christians in the world, right? I want you to understand this. Whether you like it or not, you're at fault. It's not that you actually are at fault. It's that the world looks at it, that's your fault. <laughs> and so that's probably why a lot of spiritual warfare is happening to you because you're like, what did I do? <laughs> you're washed in the blood of Jesus. That's what you did. You repented and they didn't. That's it. <laughs> what? Man, I can go and go and go and I have a lot of other sermons I got to do. So with that being said, this is the end of our message. Um, blamed for everything. <laughs> you and I are going to be blamed for everything. And we have to be okay with that. We've got to be okay with that. Amen. It's just, you just got to, because otherwise you'll, you'll, you'll get frustrated. But when you go, you know what? I'm a seal for Jesus. Amen. I'm a seal for Jesus. When you accept that, you go, well, you know, Jesus took the fire. I'm taking the fire. Even though it's not my fault. <laughs> right. And it wasn't his. And if it was repent, and if it wasn't, yeah, just be like, you know, I'm okay with the world hating me. Just like Jesus. Amen. And this is how you know you're, you're saved. You know you got the Spirit of God in you. It's when people don't like you for no reason. The Scripture, Jesus says, they hated me without a cause. And if you follow me and they treat me this way, how much more will they treat you in the same way? The world will hate you. But rejoice for your name is written in heaven. Let's pray. Father, bless this word. Lord, speak. Again, Father, teach us, guide us, refresh us, wash us in the blood of Christ, make us innocent, and not take anything that these people do or don't do personally. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless.